further establishing this great truth about the Lord and His faithfulness and the fact that He doesn't change, we're going to see uh, contained here in Psalm 89 regarding David, the servant that God chose to replace Saul. And we're going to start reading in verse number 20 of Psalm 89. The Bible reads, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have, have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face, and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea, and his right hand in the rivers. Now, before we even go any further, we see that God kept his promise, did he not? God was with David. God fought David's battles for him. God uh, exacted, you know, God allowed or didn't allow the enemy to exact upon him and have the son of wickedness afflict him. He beat down his foes before his face and plagued them that hate him. God did all that for him. God exalted David in his kingdom, in his, in his, on his throne. Um, obviously, as we go back and forth, I'm not going to dig too deep in this because there's, this is prophetic as well. And we're going to see some prophecy about Jesus Christ in here and the promise being made unto David and to his seed. And to, you know, from Abraham and to his seed and David following that same lineage from Abraham and Jesus Christ being prophesied in here as well. Let's just keep reading. I don't, I don't want to get too deep into that because the whole point is just to see God's faithfulness. And, we're, and a little bit later in the chapter, we're going to pick up on that. Verse number 25, excuse me, verse, yeah, verse number 25, I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. So here, I believe, is the prophetic of Jesus Christ. Um, my mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments then will i visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes look at verse 33 nevertheless my loving kindness will i not utterly take from him nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. And this is just one of those truths that we as believers can completely appreciate and, and love about God is that, you know, when we do wrong, when we break God's statutes, if we don't keep his commandments, because we're children, right? So it says here, he's, he's referring to children, verse 30, if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgment, if they're not listening to me, they're not listening to my rules, they're not listening to my statutes, he says, I'm going to visit their transgression with the rod. You're going to be chastened. You're going to be disciplined. You're going to have consequences for your sin. You know, it's, it's not going to be pleasant. I will come and, and, and uh, you know, visit them and their iniquity with stripes. And that's, you know, we ought to have that proper fear of the Lord for that. But he says, nevertheless, regardless of that, regardless of, of the stripes and the chastening that I'm going to deliver, he says, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. God's faithfulness will never fail. God doesn't change on that. God makes a promise, and he says, hey, eternal life, and he says, it's eternal. That means forever. He doesn't take back on that, and there is no amount of sin that you can commit that God will say, oh, nope, now, we're, now I'm taking it back. He's true to his word. He's faithful, and in his word, over and over again, when it comes to our salvation, it's believe. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Over and over again, there's one requirement. Over and over again, it's eternal, it's everlasting. And even here, he's saying, you know what? Even if they're breaking my commandments, they're not listening to me, guess what? I'm going to discipline them. I'm going to chasten them. They're going to get the rod. They're going to receive stripes. But you know what? I'm never going to just completely and utterly remove my loving kindness from them. 